Hello and welcome to CPP. This is the fourth and the last part of the video series introduction in GUI programming with C++ and Qt5. Let's go ahead and open the project from the last time. First uh, thing that I want to do is fix a problem. We have to open the node widget.cpp file. And I need to fix a problem from last time. I forgot to pass the parent to the QWidget constructor. Let's go ahead and save. All right. In this video, we're gonna talk about saving the nodes in between runs of the application. Because, yeah, well, the nodes app is not really that useful if the nodes are not saved. We're gonna save uh, the nodes into an XML file. Add new. We want a C++ class. This class is going to be named XML storage. We don't want anything extra. We just want a simple class. Let's go to the XML storage dot age. Let's start with the includes. So we're going to include QString and we're going to include standard vector. Let's forward declare what we have to forward declare. So we have to, to provide a forward declaration for our node struct. And let's go ahead to forward declare the classes from Qt that we are gonna use. So we're gonna use two classes from Qt, QXML stream writer and QXML stream reader. Okay, let's go ahead and add the public interface for the, for our class. So we're going to have a function called read that's going to return a standard vector of notes. Also, we're going to have a function write. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this return a bool. If uh, the write will fail, let's go ahead and, uh, and return. For this particular application, it's not really important, but uh, yeah. This function will have a parameter, a vector, of a standard reference wrapper. Reference wrapper of node. And we're going to take this by reference. Let's go ahead and code some helper functions. We will need function to write one individual node on, a, on the XML stream. And we're going to need the same, another function for the read. So the write function will take the stream by reference as a parameter and a constant node reference. And the read node will take the stream as a parameter and vector of nodes where the node, the node that is read from the stream is added. We could do read node to return a node and return a standard optional for node if we can't read a node, if, if in case the XML is uh, somehow corrupted. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna pass the, the vector by reference and add stuff to the vector. Maybe in some other video, I'll show you how to use standard optional. Also as a private members, we will store a, a few Q strings. So we will need a Q string. We will need a, a Q string where we will compute the full file path. To store the nodes, we are not going to use the path of the application because the application can be run from, I don't know, some other places where uh, you don't have permissions by default to write. So we are going to use a class from Qt to get a path where we can write and where we can save our file, our XML file. I'm going to show you how to do that. Also, we're going to have a few constant uh, queue strings. This is something like a config for the XML file format and the file name. So uh, we're going to have a queue string for the file name. And we're going to have uh, a few queue strings for uh, like, for example, what, what do we want our root token, our XML root token to be called? Something like notes list. How do we want a note token to be called? Like note, title, you know, what, what strings are we, use, are we using for everything? And also we're gonna need a, a date time format. We want to know how to, how to convert the, the date time to, uh, to a string and save it into the XML file. So let's go ahead and add all those.
all right let's go ahead and start with the with the header files with the including of the header files that we need all right so in the constructor we're gonna take a q string it's gonna be a path and we're gonna take it from Q standard paths. We want a writable location and we want to pass a Q standard path update allocation. Now we're gonna need a Q there. We're gonna check if the path exists already. So basically we want if it doesn't exist, we want to create it. I'm gonna start with a not there exists path. So if the path doesn't exist. I'm going to use dir.mkdir, make directory, and I'm going to set the path as a parameter. And full file path will be your string, and we want to compose the path with our file name. So let's go ahead and percentage zero backslash. And we want to provide two arguments. So the first argument will be the path, and then the second arg will be file name. Now let's implement the read function. So first we want to declare a vector of note. Let's call it notes. We want to create an input file, a Q file called input file, and we want to initialize it with full file path. And then we want to open the input file. So if input file open, and being an input file, we want to set as a parameter QIO device read only. And if the in input file was successfully open, we're gonna go ahead and create a QXML stream reader. Let's call this reader. And we want to set the address of input file. Basically, this takes a, a pointer to a Q file. We have the Q file instance. So we want to use the address of to get the address. If reader dot read next start element, we start reading the element from our QXML stream reader. Now we want to check the reader dot name to be equals to our XML root token. That's be, that's the first thing that we need to check. If it's not, we're gonna skip it. If the element is the XML root token then we go ahead and uh, read all the other elements, all the other children elements. To do that, we're going to set up a while loop and we're going to go while reader dot read next start element. As long as the reader can give us another element, we're going to call read note and we're going to pass reader and we're going to pass our vector. This is the vector. We, we are passing it by reference here and the read note will read each note, each individual note, and it's gonna add it to the notes vector. And in the end, we return, we return the vector. Let's go ahead and implement a read note to stay a little bit more consistent. Maybe it's a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, then we'll implement uh, both the write functions. We want, we want to check if stream.name equals note token. So we want to make sure that the stream is reading a note token, a note XML element. And uh, at the end, we want to skip the current element, either because if it is a note element, we read and uh, we got all the information from it. And if it isn't, again, we are not interested in, in it. So uh, we want to skip the current element either, either way. If we are reading a note element, the element name, it's a, it's a, our note token. Let's go ahead and uh, read the note. So we want to get the attributes. Basically here we take the list of attributes from the stream and we will read our note attributes from that. Also what value returns is a string ref. We need to call to string on that. We want to read the last modified and again we want uh, to convert it to a Q string. And what is returned by this Q string, we want to convert it to a Q date time. 
we're gonna need to create a queue date time. We're gonna use the static member function from string because that's what we are re reading and uh, this two string will be the first parameter to from from string. And the second parameter will be our date time format. Well, we can uh, put it on, on a separate line. So we've read the attributes. Now we're gonna need to read the content. We're gonna go ahead and uh, call stream read next start element. And if stream name is equal to content token. So we want to make sure that we are reading the content of the element. Then uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, set note content equals stream dot read element text. So content will be text element we we want to read the start we make sure that we are actually reading an, an xml element with a title with a name of uh, our content token and then we read element text and we set it into the note content and uh, here we are done with the with the note so you can we can make uh, notes pushback note all right, let's uh, go and implement the write. For the write, we want a queue file, call it output file. Again, we are creating it with our full file path. We check if output file can't be open for QIO device write only, we return false. If the file could be open for writing, then let's go ahead and create our XML string writer. Let's go ahead and uh, select the output as a parameter to the stream writer. We want to set auto formatting. We want to set uh, auto formatting to true. We want to start writing after that. Let's go ahead and add a new line here after the initialization. So what we want to do is we want to write start document. So we go ahead and uh, write the start of the document. After that, we want to write start element with our XML root, root token. We will iterate over each node and uh, inside that loop, we will gonna call write node. After the loop, we will call stream write end element and stream write end document. We want to end the element that contains the actual list, our XML root token, our node list XML element and we want to write the end of the document. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and implement write note. All, all we need to decide here is what's gonna be an element and what's gonna be an attribute. And uh, we kind of already decided that, that uh, title and last modified are gonna be attributes of the main uh, note, note element. And inside that we're gonna have a, a text element that's gonna be the, the content of the note. Let's go ahead and, uh, and uh, write that. We're gonna write a start element that's gonna be note token. When I usually have to do something like that to, to make sure that I'm not gonna forget to write the end, I write stuff like this in pairs. Like I want to, I want to write the start element of the note and I want to write the end element for the same note. And then I'll go in between and add the, and the content. I want to write stream, write attribute, and I want title token. This is the name of the attribute. And then we want the data, we want the title from the node. So you see that the first parameter of uh, write attribute is a qualified name, and then uh, the second is uh, a, a Q-string value. So we want the name is the, our title token, and uh, the value is our uh, title from, from the node. Let's go ahead and uh, write another attribute. It's gonna be last modified token as the first uh, parameter and the second is gonna be node dot last modified. We want to convert it to a Q string. So we want to use two string and uh, we want again the same date time format. We want to write a text element and this is gonna be the content token as a name and the uh, node dot content as a value. And uh, we're kind of done with it. Uh, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. Let's go ahead and save it. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to the notes manager. 
So we have read notes and write notes. We're gonna just need to go ahead and provide implementation for uh, read and write notes. For write notes is simple. We just need to create an XML. Oh, we need to, yeah, we need to include first forgot about that. Let's go ahead and include our XML storage dot H. We'll create an object of uh, XML storage and we want storage dot write and we want to call notes collection. And that's it for the writing. For the reading, we're gonna need to set up a few things because as you noticed in the XML storage implementation, we are not saving the ID. Basically, we don't really care about the ID in the saving because we are not gonna have a client server architecture where multiple clients can uh, communicate in between with the server and uh, we, we don't need to store the ID. The ID is only useful for us at runtime to have a pseudo unique ID for each node so that we can search for it and uh, not copy it around. We're gonna need to read the note from the storage and then create the IDs and we're gonna need to create a cute text document for, for each note and initialize uh, everything in our notes collection. We, we need to make sure that uh, everything is uh, set up in place. So it's not gonna be a much longer implementation. Again, we're gonna need uh, an XML storage. We're gonna read from the storage the vector of notes. And we're gonna have to iterate through everything. Let's call it n into the save notes. N dot id will be next note id. We we call our function to get the id an id for each note. Then we need to go and uh, use structured binding again to initialize our the internal data structure for the notes. So we want to call notes of n dot id. So we want to create a new note with the same id that we assigned into n, and then uh, and get a reference to that pair. Then we want the note from that pair to be n. We are copying everything from n to to the note, and we want to create a new text document. We're gonna send note as a parameter because we, we need to initialize it uh, with the text and everything. So that's kind of it for uh, implementation. Let's go ahead and see if everything is running as expected. And uh, let's go ahead and create a few notes. So if we close the application now, it, uh, the, the XML file should be saved. And uh, if we open it again, we should have the same uh, the same notes that we created previously everything is uh, is working let's see if we remove notes okay we don't want to remove that let's say we remove we s we learned c++ okay this works too all right, so uh, everything uh, looks like it's it's working. That's it for this video, and yeah, that's it for this video series, at least for now. If you want me to continue doing uh, some other, like like for now, this uh, series is over from my point of view. Uh, what uh, could be done, and maybe I will, maybe I won't is uh, split the notes uh, the notes manager into two classes two separate classes one to handle the business logic and one to handle the actual collection of data and uh, what i could be also doing is create a mobile friendly version and create the project to run on android or ios well, on ios i don't have an ios device but i could maybe run it in uh, in an emulator so uh, if you want any of that or if you want anything else, just let me know in the comments below. As usual, hope you learned something. Have fun. Bye-bye. See you in the next one.